Since we've arrived, we've been challenged in so many different ways. Working together, living together, <laughs> travelling together. We've discussed cultural differences, Canadian politics, indigenous rights, and of course, the impending Canadian winter. <laughs> <laughs> However, one of the biggest discussions that we've had has been about how we see the world changing and the leadership that this calls for. We, as a group, have identified four interrelated trends, <laughs> shifts occurring globally at this time. Inequality, security, human mobility, and climate change. We've had our debates, and this list is definitely not exhaustive, but we believe that all four shifts are at particular pivot points in human history and demand urgent action of public leaders. We will then speak about the type of leadership needed to face head on the challenges of 2015 and beyond. Increasing inequality is eroding all spheres of human society. By next year, 1% of world's population will all more wealth than the other 90%. Currently, the richest 85 people on the planet have the same wealth as 90% of the world population. We, as a community of fellows, don't think this is acceptable. Increasing inequality divides us according to gender, race, access to education, life expectancy. Inequality limits us all. For example, in 2015, only half of the world's working age women are on, in the labor force. What about the other 50%? What is their potential? From my perspective, as a young woman working for women's empowerment, I see women waging a daily battle against educational and income inequality, sex discrimination and violence. Personal safety is under attack. Today, more than ever before, war against ISIS, nuclear threats, the Charlie Hebdo attack in Paris, crisis in Ukraine. Globally, tens of thousands of people are dying in armed conflicts around the world. The International Institute for Strategic Studies says that despite fewer conventional wars, the number of deaths have, has tripled since 2008 <coughs> due to an intensification of violence. Today's wars kill and displace more people than ever before. Rule-based violence is no longer the norm. With the decline of the traditional nation state and the rise of non-conventional global actors like ISIS, citizens of the world can no longer rely on state protection. Now in our team, we have some fellows who've shared first-hand experiences of violence, whether from extremism in Pakistan, or police brutality here in Canada. We must never forget the individual human impact at the heart of such issues. A lack of security impacts the very capabilities of people to live the lives that they would like to live, based on their choices, their dignity, their fundamental human rights. Conflicts also affect patterns of human mobility. Migration is, of course, nothing new in our history. However, the migration patterns we see today are the consequence of lack of leadership in inequality, human security, and climate change, all of which are drivers of human movement. Unfortunately, along with mass migrations, there is a trend of erecting more barriers. Just today, Hungary completed its plans to keep refugees out of Europe. Of course, calling the phenomenon of mass migration a crisis suggests that the issue of human mobility is temporary. A sudden movement of people which will stop in a few months. Will it? We would argue that the new security landscape combined with climate change could make mass migration the new norm. Climate change. This is not just an environmental issue, but a security issue. It poses a risk of planetary proportions and at a timescale which affects not only us, 
but our children and generations to come. Now I remember while studying climate change policy at university, I remember the huge disappointment I felt after COP15 in Denmark 2009, where there was an absolute lack of global leadership. Since then, climate change has arguably gone off the global agenda. So why is it urgent now, you may ask? Well, we're reaching a tipping point. Just this year, the journal Science published its review of planetary boundaries, <coughs> nine physical and biochemical thresholds which indicate the health of the planet. Out of these nine thresholds, four have now been irreversibly crossed. These have led to devastating impacts across the world, but particularly in developing countries least able to mitigate and least able to adapt to such changes. Now several of us in this room have experienced firsthand the effects of climate change. We, as a cohort, believe that public leaders can no longer afford to ignore this existential crisis. <coughs> the sense of urgency regarding planetary boundaries must not paralyze, but mobilize. The UN Climate Change Conference in Paris this, this December presents an opportunity for global leaders to take this issue seriously and act in the interests of us all. Inequality, security, human mobility, climate change, they all call for a new kind of public leadership. The 2015 survey from the World Economic Forum showed that 86% of respondents agree that we have a leadership crisis in the world today. Now, why would they say this? We believe that it's because the international community has largely failed to address any major global issues in recent years. We see a growing democratic deficit. Non-state actors like global corporations have more power than ever before. At the same time, only 22% of elected public leaders are women. These factors undermine our democracies and limit the ability of world leaders to address global challenges. It is our opinion that public leaders need to act from the very first principle that the life of every human being is equal and important. Public leaders need to do three things. One, reach across groups to include diverse perspectives and experiences. Divergent views deepen our conversation and broaden our horizons, allowing meaningful solutions to be discovered, tested, and adopted. Two, public leaders uh, needs to, across all sectors, needs to cooperate and collaborate with communities. This means shifting vertical power structure to become more horizontal. And finally, three, Global leaders need to focus on long-term solutions for everyone, not just the selected powerful few. Now these four pivotal issues, inequality, security, human mobility, and climate change, represent many risks for us all, but also huge opportunities. We are at a historic turning point. Each and every one of us in this room needs to think about how best are we going to utilize these four pivotal shifts as an opportunity for reform. Here in Soleil House, all 12 of us are honing our skills in order to contribute to a new type of public leadership. Leadership that draws from the diverse range of experiences and perspectives across the world. We look forward to working with you all, the mentors, board of directors, alumni, and the wider Soviet community in the coming year and beyond. In ending, we want to share some words from former UN Secretary General Kofi Annan. He said, more than ever before in human history, we share a common destiny. We can master it only by facing it together. Thank you.